we're going to take a look at how to remove, replace, and refine a background in Photoshop. Now, you could use the two options at the bottom on the contextual taskbar, which is to select subject. This does a fairly decent job. It's not too bad. It's accurate to some extent. And then you can also try the remove background. And 90% of the time, it does a decent job. I still find that the pen tool is the king of background removals. This is because it gives you really sharp results and you can control exactly what edges you want to go around. Now, this tool can also be very time consuming for some people. So a alternative to this is to use a tool called the magnetic lasso tool. This one is basically the pen tool, but instead of you having to manually plot each point, it will automatically place it for you. And then all you need to do is just trace it around the subject. You do have some important settings at the top, which is the width, contrast, and frequency. So these determine how it's going to detect the edges. If you have some really faded edges, you may need to increase the contrast to, let's say, something like 30. It can go all the way up to 100. The higher the contrast, the easier it will be to detect the edge. You also have frequencies, so how many you want it to plot each time it goes around it will plot the dots. And then you also have the width, which is the distance between each one. So with that being said, we need to start on the shoulder or anywhere on this image, and you want to simply left click once, and then you want to slowly go around the object or the person. Now, you also want to take your time as well. You don't want to rush it because it can make mistakes. So as long as you're taking it nice and steady, you can go all the way around this image. You can also manually add in some points by left clicking and then left clicking again. And this will also help it to guide this line as well. You can also press backspace as well, and this will go back a few steps. If it makes a mistake. Now, when it comes to the hair, you want to go all the way around and give it a little bit of a gap because we'll be using a different tool to refine the hair. Go back to the very first one, and then when you see the circle, connect it up, and there we go. We now have our selection. We're just going to fix up the errors and the problems that occurred. So for example, we're going to use a tool called the polygonal lasso tool. This one is really easy. If you select the second mode, you can add it onto here. And just by left clicking and going back to the first one, you can connect it up and there we go. You can also subtract by holding alt, connect it up and there we go. And then once you're happy with the results, we can now refine the hair by going to the brush tool right here, or you can go to select the mask at the top. In here, we're going to use the second tool down, which is the edge refinement tool. We're just going to increase the brush size a little bit. And then by left clicking, you can start to refine the hair. Sometimes this can also be destructive. So what you may need to do is you may need to press K on your keyboard, and this will show you exactly what's left behind and what you need to correct. By using the brush tool, the third tool down, we can subtract it from here by holding Alt, and then left click, and then just remove it from here. You can always switch back to a normal view by pressing V, and as you can see, we also need to correct this bit right here. We're just going to make the brush smaller, apply it back onto here. And then once you're happy with the results, we can also scroll down to the bottom. And if you have any color fringe, for example, if you have some blue tint or whatever tint onto the hair, you can use something called decontaminated colors. 
and this will just remove that from here. And it will also make the thin, small detailed hairs more visible. However, you want to keep it a good balance between, let's say, 50%, otherwise it's going to be too aggressive and it's going to look distorted. Once you've done that, we can now go to Output 2, set it to New Layer with Layer Mask, and then go ahead and press OK. And there we go. We now have the background removed with some really good results. As you can see, the edges are nice and sharp. So when it comes to changing the background, all you need to do is go ahead and hold Control, left click on here, get yourself a selection, and you want to invert it by pressing Control, Shift, and I. We're going to focus purely on the background, and now we're going to use the generative fill, and then you just want to type in whatever you want the new background to be. So let's say, for example, we want a sat on a rock in the middle of a ink rose field. We can go ahead and click on generate and then just wait for it to generate the background. Honestly, everything looks great other than the edges are really harsh and they don't look great at all. As you can see, it's smudged it. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, click on this button right here, which will enhance this variation. And a cool little trick for this to fix this problem is to duplicate this layer. You want to hide this one and then also hide the background. And then we're going to convert it to a smart object. We're also going to rasterize this layer so we can actually edit it. And by using the remove tool, we can get ourselves a selection around the person. This is very important, otherwise it's going to generate a random person. Completely get rid of the shadows and everything within this picture. And now you just want to get yourself a mask, press Control or Command and I to invert it. We're going to hide it for now, and then you want to bring the other ones back and keep this one on top. So now, if you have any areas that needs correcting, for example, right here and around the edges, you can use the brush tool and by using a white color, you can paint it onto here and this will correct it. And remove that horrible edge. For the feet, we're going to only do the inside part. We're going to keep everything else except from this area right here. And there we go. If you want to, you can continue refining it. You can also add in some adjustments such as a hue and saturation to add in some more color. If you wanted to make it brighter or more colorful, you can also add in some brightness and contrast which will enhance it even more. And then finally, the very last thing that you can do once again to refine those edges even more is you can hold shift by clicking on the top one, go all the way to the bottom one, convert it to a smart object. We're going to duplicate it and keep this one as a backup. And with the one on top, we're just going to rasterize layer. And by using the remove tool, we can enhance the edges and fix any problems. So as you can see right here, we can get ourselves the edge. And most of the time, this should fix it. It may take a few attempts. And there we go, that's starting to look a lot better now and a lot sharper. You can also go to filter, get yourself a sharpen or even better, you can get yourself a unsharpened mask and this will sharpen it up even more, giving you some really nice detail. And that's pretty much it. 